Hello, my name is James Richards, and today I will be presenting for Dr. Christensen's Accounting 6100 course at Southern Utah University. The topic of my presentation is a research paper that I have recently written. The assigned topic was the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. What? What? Is it working? As a brief outline for today's presentation, I'll begin by discussing the history of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. Following that, I will discuss the topics of ethics and whistleblowers. After those have been thoroughly discussed, I will offer my conclusion of whether or not the Sarbanes-Oxley Act is working. To begin with the Sarbanes-Oxley Act history. The Sarbanes-Oxley Act was the government's response to big business frauds that consumed the news at the turn of the century. Particularly prominent were the scandals from WorldCom and Enron. The act was named after Senator Paul Sarbanes, a Maryland Democrat, and Representative Michael G. Oxley, an Ohio Republican. Good to see both of those parties working together. The Sarbanes-Oxley Act has three main components. The first component is, deals with ethical standards. The second component concerns whistleblowers. And the third component, or final component, is about officer accountability and we will not be discussing it as it falls outside the realms of my paper. Moving on to ethics. As mentioned, ethics is a large focus of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. Also as mentioned, the Sarbanes-Oxley Act was introduced due to large public accounting scandals. The disconcerting aspect of these scandals was the open and blatant disregard for ethical standards. To combat blatant disregard, a new focus was placed on business ethics. To implement this focus, professional and scholastic ethics education was introduced and emphasized. First, an awareness of, or the ethics education serves two purposes. First, an awareness of fraud, and second, ethics education. As an awareness of fraud, it's important that we all know how fraud is perpetrated so that we can watch for it and report it and make sure that we don't get caught up in it. Ethics education teaches the importance of making prior ethical decisions. This is a big one. If we have our minds made up before we are ever in an ethically compromising situation of how we will act, when that time and situation arrives, there's no decision to be made. That decision has already been made and we simply act upon our standards. Whistleblowers is also a very large component of ethics or of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. Um, there are two key models pertaining to whistleblowers. First, an anti-retaliation model, and second, the structural model. The anti-retaliation model is what most people associate the Sarbanes-Oxley Act with. This component offers significant protection from retaliation for whistleblowers. The blatant disregard for ethical standards that was previously discussed was partly, was particularly true um, in major accounting scandals. The very interesting aspect of this is that these, um, these problems were, off, were often perpetuated, perpetrated sorry, under many senior officers and company officers. So employees felt that they needed to comply and they feared not only their job but much more if they didn't comply. The whistleblower protection under the anti-retaliation model offers great protection under these circumstances. The second model is a structural model, and it's often overlooked. However, it may be the most significant portion of whistleblowers. The structural model essentially outlines an internal course of reporting and addressing misconduct within the company. This component is very important as it's intended to prevent misconduct from actually being perpetrated. Finally, I'll offer my conclusion. Um, Again, the topic of my paper is the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. What, what, is it working? This legislation is now 12 years old and due for evaluation. Um, the economic recession stands as a big, a big obstacle for saying that the Sarbanes-Oxley Act is and has been successful because many of the same problems that, that caused the Sarbanes-Oxley Act were involved in this economic recession. However, I respond that the Sarbanes-Oxley Act is working. It was impossible for one set of legislation to completely stop all dishonesty and misconduct in such a short time. The act was simply too late to prevent the recession. However, the Sarbanes-Oxley Act has been monumentally successful 
and raising ethical awareness. Nearly every single business course and business training involves an ethical component. Companies are more focused on training employees on ethical standards and internal controls to report misconduct. There is also great hope in knowing that nearly every new employee entering the workforce is aware of these um, issues and hopefully committed to live an ethical life.